uh, what should it's it's like is like this is this like is this okay should i do one of these or should i do like what how do i how? what's going on disney fans it's disney dan here in a new space it's me you can see me now i'm not a puppet I'm not just this ethereal voice that makes you giggle. It's me in the flesh. And I'm so used to looking at my microphone when I talk to you guys, but now I can actually look at you guys when I talk to you. So this is great. <laughs> Listen, do you ever sit up late at night and think about the delicate subject of what Disney parks do when male characters that are topless need to be translated into costume characters? How does Disney parks handle the male nipple? I think about this all the time. <laughs> I do, no, I don't really think about this all the time. Here's why I think about this. It's because not too long ago, I saw this interesting photo of Mowgli on the internet. He was making an appearance in the parks for a meet and greet. And it was just this college kid, pretty much never nude in it. He was, he was wearing these skin tone dance shoes. He was wearing a loincloth and a wig. And he was pretty gosh darn naked. And I'm like, man, I suddenly started thinking there are so many characters with nipples in Disney movies. How does Disney handle that? What's the metric? What is the guidelines between whether or not you show male nipples or don't show male nipples? I mean, you might think this is a strange thing to think about, but think about the fact that Disney Parks is this family establishment, right? It's that there are some people who are very up in arms about uh, nipples. Some of you right now may be watching this video and like, why is my favorite Disney Disney YouTube channel talking about nipples? Because we need to talk about it, all right? Because it's interesting, there's history, there's decisions that were made there, and there's some fun stories to tell. You go back to like Fantasia and you've got the centaurs, you've got uh, Chernabog, you've got all these bare chested characters. Almost all of them lack any kind of, of uh, nipple definition or really any kind of definition uh, at all. Like the centaurs, they're kind of like this like, amorphous blob. You see some nipples drawn with uh, Chernabog, right? Cause he's this massive imposing force on the top of a mountain. And so he's got muscles and they take the time to add that definition and give all those details. But with things like Fantasia, you know, you're not getting any kind of uh, recognizable character that you're gonna wanna meet in the parks, right? So what was that first example? And I think that's Jungle Book. I think that's Mowgli. I think that Mowgli was our first kind of bare chested character that gained a lot of popularity. He's a character that people wanna meet. People love the Jungle Book, people love Mowgli. And there are three great examples of Mowgli. There is a park version of Mowgli, there's a Disney on Ice version of Mowgli. And then there is, believe it or not, a Disney uh, Broadway production of The Jungle Book that uh, never made it past kind of like preview production out in Chicago, but it was there, Disney produced it. And there was this little Disney Broadway Mowgli. And it kind of illustrated three interesting sort of choices that uh, Disney has to make when they're representing their characters uh, to, to the public, right? In, in the different ways that they're gonna provide you entertainment. So. In the parks, Mowgli has made, had some interesting things <laughs> because he's naked, right? Except for when it's cold because every character like this has a cold weather alternate version. And so they take this college kid, throw him in this burn victim compression suit. <laughs> and sometimes the kid's lucky and it matches his skin tone. Sometimes the kid isn't lucky and it does not match the skin tone. <laughs> And that's kind of where there's an interesting interpretation with what the parks do and how they're going to tell the story of a character. And uh, with Mowgli, with face characters, they go all in with re a realistic translation of that character into the parks, right? They're taking that character off the screen and they're dropping it into, into the parks. And that means it's a guy uh, shirtless, right? In a loincloth, if you want to meet him. But then if you shift over to look at Disney on Ice with Mowgli, you have that same kind of compression suit He's at a distance, they need to add definition. So they take that skin bodysuit and they will airbrush nipples. They'll airbrush lots of stuff. They'll airbrush a belly button, like a little bit of a chest line, some nipples, even like kneecaps. They're adding definition to that character. You can't airbrush nipples on a skin suit for Mowgli because up close you're just like, mommy, why does this guy have nipples painted on his, on his, on his? <laughs> on his leotard and you don't there's no real good answer to that when a kid asks you that question so i mean really i think in the parks the solution maybe should be when it's too cold mowgli just stays inside you know because it just too too many it raises too many questions just as many questions as this wig choice in this other version of mowgli i'm concerned about ariel 
Have you noticed she's been acting peculiar lately? The next iconically bare-chested male character to hit the, the silver screen of Disney animation was Triton, right? Triton is this god of the ocean, right? And he's all barrel-chested and, 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 and ripped, and he's got nipples, right? And interestingly enough, Disney continues to honor Triton's nipples whenever they represent him anywhere. There's statues of the man with big, godly ocean nipples. He's in a couple of nighttime parades. He's up there in this in this muscly bodysuit with you know, ba bam the nipples. Disney on ice with a character that big and that and that bulky. You kind of get to that place where you have to start to add a little bit of things like nipples to the costume so that it looks good. The 90s was just essentially male bare chested anime. <laughs> There was just some guy who was in that Disney, Walt Disney Animation Studios just like, hey, it's the 90s, let's get all the bare chested dudes in these movies we can. Cause you've got Triton, you've got Gaston, you've got Aladdin, you've got Pocahontas, you've got Hercules. It's like boom, 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 boom. What's interesting about all these bare chested characters in the movies from the 90s is that Disney Parks is kind of like, apologizing for all the nudity from the 90s films. And they're like, all right, we'll cover it up, right? So Gaston, so I was wearing a shirt. Even when you ask the Gaston meet and greet character to show a little chest, none of them ever have hairy chest, by the way. Funny story, I was once at Disney World with my kid. It was my 30th birthday. My wife surprised me with a trip to Disney World. And so I'm there with my kid, uh, you know, and I like to sing, I'm always singing. And, and I, I, I love to sing the Gaston song, you know, when I was a lad, I ate four dozen eggs. And so I was singing that as we were waiting in Splash Mountain and all over the place. And we took my kid over to LeFou's Brew and my, my daughter's walking around and she's looking around and she stops and she's like, Daddy, you know what? You remind me a lot of Gaston. And I'm like, why? It's because I'm, you know, really big and strong. And she, she stops for a moment and she's like, no, I think it's because you're roughly the size of a barge. <laughs> I was, I was like, thanks, babe. <laughs> I don't know what Aladdin's bare chested in the, he's just wearing a vest. When I was a kid, I was traumatized when Jafar transported Aladdin to the wintry mountains, the snowy mountains, and he's just wearing a vest. I used to think to myself, how is that man operating? I've been outside when it's cold and he's, he's not wearing any clothing. I'm not, I'm not even sure he's got underwear on underneath those, underneath those, you know, fluffy pants. It's gotta be absolutely freezing cold. But in the parks, when you see Aladdin, he's always wearing an undershirt. He's always wearing this, this undershirt that just didn't exist in the film. It wasn't, it wasn't a thing in the film, but to add a little level of modesty into the parks, of course, you know, you, you, you do that. In the original Aladdin, Genie does not have nipples. He does have this concave chest feature that kind of gives him this big barrel chest and gives him a little bit of detail, but otherwise he's a relatively smooth chested, blue, ethereal being, right? But interestingly enough, when Jafar is turned into a genie at the end, he has nipples. What does that say to children? Is it that only bad genies have nipples, but good genies don't have nipples? Are nipples bad, right? But I think Disney answered that. They addressed it at least slightly in the remake where both Will Smith and the name of that actor that I can't remember, both had nipples. <laughs> it's great, the Alan Tudyk, he's great. I, you know, he's fantastic. He's a wonderful man. He, he's a wonderful range of, but like, why, 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 why not bring Gilbert Gottfried back? Why not bring, you brought, you brought James Earl Jones back for that iconic voice. You mean to tell me that Gilbert Gottfried doesn't have the same kind of iconic voice as um, I, with Pocahontas, you've got Kokum and you know, all the Native Americans in the film, they're all very bare chested. Kokum, they put like these paw prints on his chest in the movie and uh, they're, they're oddly enough placed that it's like, maybe, maybe they're covering up his nipples, but I don't think that's the story they were trying to tell there with Pocahontas. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of Pocahontas kind of like interactions in the parks, but like in Fantasmic, they have the Pocahontas canoes, but they're all wearing, you know, their robes and stuff. It's dark. You can't see really much of anything. Pocahontas is beautiful. She's on top of the mountain. John Smith, he's swinging around. You're not really focusing on whether or not nipples are present, but they're not. So I'm just here to tell you that Pocahontas representation, it's a fine line that they draw. Fine <laughs> work, my boy. You've done it. <laughs> In Hercules, Hercules was just like it's artistic nipples, right? It's, you know, Greek lore, it's the gods, right? And they've got like the, the, you know, like the Greek swirly things, you know, like the, you know, those things. Like Zeus's nipples are all done up in that, but Zeus, 
he's not really appearing in the parks very often. And Hercules, while he has plenty of sashed, shirtless, bare-chested moments, uh, when he's in the parks, he's always wearing his armor and cape. You know, you're not really getting a lot of bare-chested Hercules. Mulan comes in, right? Nipples are, you know, like a major plot point. There are so many topless dudes in Mulan. You know, you're, you're trying to represent men. They're strong, they're muscly. When they make appearances in the parks here and there, occasionally, like when Li Shang appears in the parks, he's wearing his full warrior regalia. So you don't ever get any Li Shang nipples in the parks, right? So, so far in the parks, nipple-wise, all we've gotten are Triton and Mowgli. Where is the ultimate example of male nipples in the parks? And I think there's no better representation of male nipples in the park than 1999's Tarzan, when Phil Collins was living his best life and giving us all these sweet, tasty jams. He'll be in my heart. So Tarzan goes, goes full in. If you thought that Mowgli was relatively uncomfortable to like stand around because he's pretty much soups naked, wait until you meet Tarzan. These guys could be professional wrestlers because that's how ripped and fantastic these guys look. It's ridiculous. And they're all wearing these incredibly complicated like dreadlock wigs that are sometimes are just so oversized and look absolutely ridiculous on them. But like, boom, Tarzan, he's full on muscly nipple animated in the movie. And he, they don't hold back in the parks. Recently, they're like, OK, we got to reel it in throw a viney sash on him, cover them, Tarzy nips up. He's out a lot for Not So Scary Halloween, so if you ever have the opportunity to do that, that's a really good chance to meet him. All right, here's where it's gonna get a little weird. Not because of the nipples, but because of the costumes I'm about to show you. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch comes and you've got like Moses from the movie. You've got the ice cream guy. You've got a couple of, you know, it's Hawaii. You know, it's, it's like, of course, people are at the beach. They're hanging out in their swim trunks. When Disney on Ice grabs hold of these big franchise films and they make full production numbers out of them, sometimes for the entire show, sometimes like a 15 to 20 minute block. If that's the movie that's dropping during that year or so and they want to capitalize on that. You know, I mean, it'd be Disney on Ice with Stitch. There is a Moses costume character and, uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. I don't, I, it's, it's too much to look at. We're not gonna look at it very long. I can't even, I can't even look at you while you're looking at it. That's how uncomfortable I am. And it doesn't get any better, unfortunately, because Pixar, they did Brave and they did Young Macintosh, the one with like the swirly blue arm paint. Oh, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to show you. So <laughs> this is, this is Macintosh on Pixar and Ice and and yeah, I'm uncomfortable as you are right now. That's really spooky to look at, all right? That's not okay to look at. <laughs> Here's why the costumes look like this, though. It's Disney on ice. It's a huge arena. These things are being seen from a significant distance away. The spaces are massive, and uh, you just need to get detail from a distance. That's what these costumes provide. They also sell front row tickets, unfortunately. And so, you know, there are moments where you gotta get face to face with some truly terrifying things. <laughs> Moana, when it dropped not too long ago, Maui in the film, believe it or not, if you pause it and you zoom in, behind all of those enchanted mystical tattoos, there are in fact nipples. But his appearances both on Disney on Ice and in the parks, the costumes are just so busy. The skin is just so busy, you wouldn't even be able to notice nipples at all. Maui, while he has very subtle nipples in the movie, and they're, all the village people, I mean, they're not like, the, not, the, not those village people, like Moana's village people. They're all bare-chested men and they all have nipples. So, I mean, like you see that as the films become more realistic, and as, that, and as they explore more of this 3D rendering and these computer animations, I mean, sure, Pixar's done things like Ken, the Ken doll, but Ken never had nipples in the first place. So he's not really a valid example. And when he did appear in Epcot very shortly, he was dressed like a college kid from the night. Like, I mean, he just looked like a regular dude in a jean jacket. He wasn't really rocking his best beach look uh, when he was meeting kids and their families and, you know, Norway or wherever, wherever that, that, that meet and greet opportunity was. There is one branch of Disney that does that just does nipples right. I don't I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> There's one on their division of Disney that just hits the nipple on the head. And that's Disney on Broadway, right? It's the Disney Broadway team. And there's a reason for that. And we've kind of been talking about, you know, why the choices have been made to present nipples or not present nipples, depending on the character. Mowgli or Tarzan, there's, there's not much else you can do if you want to bring those characters into the parks other than present them the way that they are on screen. Because otherwise, it cheapens out that experience. People who meet burn victim Mowgli 
probably, probably a little disappointed when they go home and look at their pictures and, and they're, they're paging through and they've got a picture with Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Donald and then this, and people are like, what happened there? And, they're, and you have no answer, but at least you have this ridiculous memory, right? <laughs> Disney on Broadway, they're trying to tell real stories. They're trying to take the stories that we know and love and present them to you in a realistic kind of way. And in all of these things, if a character's shirtless, he's shirtless. From Triton to Aladdin to Tarzan, uh, even Simba. Broadway's not necessarily trying to appeal to the same audience that the movies originally were. It's supposed to be this fancy night out, this real life thing. An interesting thing about Aladdin that I noticed is that whenever a new Aladdin would come in to play Aladdin on Broadway, and they would do promo shots of him on stage to release to like, you know, ABC or whatever, he was always just so tastefully kind of posed so that his vest is always sans nipple. They just always perfectly, I don't think it's photoshopped out, but I think that they just place the vest in just a way. This channel is slowly becoming, hey, Disney Dan says Broadway's the best, but I mean, that's, I've got a theater degree. I don't know what you want me to tell you. They do it really well. Disney on Broadway is not afraid to give you nipples, all right? They're just not, they're fearless when it comes to male nipples. Disney parks, they try to be a little apologetic. Disney on ice, they'll only throw nipples in there uh, if they need to, because otherwise the character's just gonna look like a weird uh, gelatinous blob floating around on the ice, uh, you know, to give a little bit of detail. And in the parks, uh, you know, sometimes you just can't get around it. But if you can, like with Aladdin, by throwing an undershirt under him, uh, you know, boom, you, you, you can make him a little bit more modest because he's in more demand. You know what I mean? Mowgli and Tarzan, they're not in the same demand that uh, the Aladdin is in. It's interesting, isn't it? You didn't think that nipples in the parks would be something that would be so thought provoking and strange, but it is. It's something that is uh, weird. It's super weird. If you really boil it down to, it's what characters are in demand, what characters are iconic, and what characters, you know, people want to meet. And then they have to make those decisions and, and you know, kind of go from there. We just went through this whole nipple voyage together. Uh, tell me in the comments what your favorite uh, representation of nipples has been. Do you have something, a cowl or something you could put on? Maybe out there in some alternate universe, there's Star Wars on ice, right? And there's this whole scene with shirtless Kylo and he's slowly circling Rey, you know, on the ice and they're, they're talking to each other on the mountains. And I don't know why they're actually not doing that. I think people would go to see Star Wars on ice, quite honestly. So <laughs> hopefully you liked my new, my new space, right? Do you like this? I've got like a desk. I'm like Jimmy Fallon a little. I'm like a fat Jimmy Fallon when he has a beard. I'm like a fat Jimmy Kimmel when he has a beard. Jimmy Kimmel's been so thin for so long. He looks so good. I can't even stand it. I'm so jealous. I uh, hope you like the new video. Uh, like it, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. I don't know what that bell does, but make sure you hit it. Let me know uh, uh, in the comments below or uh, tweet me, Instagram me, Facebook me. Tell me what you liked about the video. If you like it, give me, tell me what you want to see in future videos. You know, all those things that you tell me. I love when you guys talk to me. Listen, I just love when you leave me comments. So I'm just asking you to leave me more comments because they tickle me a great deal um, and they warm my heart. So <laughs> do that. Uh, and thanks for watching. Uh, and as always, guys, you rock. You guys are awesome. Thanks.